Nice. Relations between the European Union and the United States have become increasingly strained over the last four years. With President-elect Joe Biden due to move into the White House in January, the bloc's leaders are hoping to reset the transatlantic alliance. But will burying the tensions of the Trump era be an easy fix? Our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, takes a look. As the United States prepares to transition from one president to another, a transition is also underway on how the EU will work with the US. A reboot of the transatlantic alliance. A draft plan from the Commission plans to revitalise that partnership, but burying the tensions of the Trump era and focusing instead on working together in five key areas. Fighting the coronavirus pandemic, enhancing economic recovery, combating climate change, upholding multilateralism and shared values, promoting peace and security. I would say in Brussels there's there is already a lot of enthusiasm about this report coming out. Uh, as Am Chairman, you and our member companies, we definitely welcome this. We've been asking and striving for a closer relationship um, for so long, and it's certainly been testy times over the last four years, so this is a welcome development. And if I may, just to stress how important the transatlantic relationship is, which is why we're so enthusiastic about this, it creates jobs, prosperity, growth and provide security on both sides of the Atlantic. And while differences particularly on trade and the dominance of the digital giants will persist, not least of all on data protection and taxation, there will likely be a renewed joined up approach to China. And I think, you know, obviously the Biden administration will pay a lot more attention to a set of issues where the Trump administration simply wasn't that interested on human rights and so forth relatively speaking. And so so there's a lot that, that can be done together. And I think they're trying to lay the groundwork for that kind of a productive conversation. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that American policy towards China is going to be any softer. If anything, it's conceivable that it'll continue to get tougher and tougher. But will Europe and the United States be on the same page for most of that? I think you know this exercise is about trying to improve the odds. The 11-page draft document is an attempt to move on but also to move back to a more familiar transatlantic relationship. Leaders will decide whether to endorse the plan at the council meeting next week, before a possible joint EU-US diplomacy summit next year. Darren McCaffrey, Euronews, Brussels. And Darren is still in Brussels for us this evening. Let's speak to him now. Darren, the relationship between the EU and the US has never been as strained before as it has during the past four years. It does look likely that the Biden team will try to reset ties with the bloc. But as we're just hearing in your report, it doesn't necessarily mean a return to the old ways. Uh, no, it doesn't in many regards. First of all, some of those key obstacles, Oliver, that, you know, strain relations at normal times between the United States and the EU are not going to go away on issues, for example, like trade, on the big tech giants, taxation, uh, their dominance, data protection. You know, these are big fundamental questions that the EU are grappling with. They often involve American companies. And, you know, that is not going to change. And those points of friction are likely to rub up against each other in the years to come, despite the fact that President Joe Biden is in the White House. And then there are kind of the key relationships as well, most notably, for example, with China. You know, the United States' rhetoric on China is likely to continue as harshly as it has uh, before. And in practical terms, too, it is clear the United States is viewing China somewhat as a threat. Now, the EU does do agree, too, but it's also clear that the European Union wants to shape and forge its own relationship uh, with uh, China. And that will sometimes, again, be at odds uh, with the United States. Well, I've been speaking to Reinhard Budikofer. He is an MEP in the European Parliament, a German MEP, but he also chairs the European Parliament's relationships with both China and the United States. And I began by asking him what his reaction was to this European Union Commission document, whether he was welcome news or not. Well, it's more than necessary. Um... It, it is signaling that the European Commission and uh, the External Action Service have understood one very important basic fact about the opportunities of renewing the transatlantic relationship. We can't just sit back and wait for Biden uh, to uh, come our way. 
we have to proactively promote our own agenda, our own proposals. We have to signal that we want to be an active driving part of that renewal and not just a bystander. Uh, you say not uh, just a bystander, but clearly what this document didn't focus on is the issues of tensions that are still likely to be there, whether it's on trade, uh, whether it is on the dominance of big global, particularly American tech companies. You know, a change in the White House isn't going to change some of the fundamental problems with the transatlantic relationship, is it? Well, that's obvious. Uh, nobody, nobody could expect that some of these uh, contradictions would just dissipate because uh, the American people elected a new president. But what we have to focus on is a positive agenda. Uh, we will have our hands full with dealing with some of the problems that we are inheriting uh, from the last four years or maybe even longer. But uh, in order to really create a positive dynamic, we also have to identify issues where we can pull together in the same direction. It's clear the United States, for example, is going to focus under a Biden administration, just as it has under Trump, under the third bit, the rival bit. And won't that in some ways drag the European Union in that direction anyway, even if it doesn't necessarily want to go there? Well, I... I don't understand the question really. Nobody has to drag us towards understanding that we are systemic rivals. We have stated that uh, almost two years ago. So this is our own understanding. Nobody's driving us no, no, there. But, but if, if the European Union wants to be part of an alliance, as you say, as it does with the United States, and a closer alliance and a strategic alliance, surely the United States essentially views the prism of China through the idea that it is, um, you know, a massive rival. That means it will be more difficult for the European Union to see China as a partner, surely. We'll have to pick sides, and we know what side we'll pick. I still don't get it, sorry, because first of all, I didn't just speak about an alliance with the US. We are partners in the NATO alliance, but the kind of alliance building that I'm talking about and that President-elect Biden is talking about is a much wider alliance that does not just bring the West back together. It's not just about reuniting the West. It's also about opening up to the rest and including uh, global democracies. So this is not just a US plus EU versus China kind of game. This is a multilateral effort to promote a international rules-based order in which all countries can play a role. So, Oliver, there will be challenges and difficulties still to come in the years ahead. No one is disputing that. But you know what? Politics isn't sometimes just about practicalities. It's also about kind of the ambience. It's about the messages uh, that you send out. And it's pretty clear that most EU leaders are welcoming of the Biden presidency, are pretty optimistic how things will pan out in the years to come. That could not be said of the Trump administration. An administration, it must be said, of course, uh, that essentially didn't like the European Union, didn't want it to exist and viewed it as a rival. That's not true of Joe Biden. And that is why I think we've seen this document produced today and indeed the mood music change in Brussels since the election in the United States to one where they think uh, that in the years to come there will be much more cooperation uh, rather than being at each other's throats. Darren McCaffrey, our political editor, joining us today from the Belgian capital. Thank you very much.